Okay, so let's talk about location, location, location. What's the uh, habitable zone, the sort of Fifth Avenue, Central Park West of... Uh... <laughs> so that's, that's where you want to be because as far as we know about life, we need uh, complex structures and uh, that requires temperatures which are not too hot or not too cold. So you have a solvent in which you can do this chemistry. That is a region away from the star, which is somewhere between the orbits of Venus and Mars, if you think about our solar system. Depending it depends on the, on the star. The star yes, on the a smaller star, it will closer for right. the sun. So that's what we call the habitable zone. How can you detect a body that far away uh, with any precision that close to a star? What, what, is, the, what is the strategy that uh, Kepler uses? Kepler uses a particular uh, technique, which is called the transit method and we'll probably talk a little bit more about that, but essentially think of it as mini eclipses <coughs> of the planets orbiting the whole star, and those eclipses uh, reveal the existence of a planet if you see them periodically. This is an example of what you see behind me of one of the Kepler systems uh, called Kepler-62, where the star is slightly smaller than the sun, but other than that, it's similar to the sun. And we already know that there are five planets that orbit that star. Three of them are very close to the star. You see their orbits. And then two are further out with orbital periods of months, uh, six to nine months. Right, but, but you're playing a game with me here because Kepler does not see that gorgeous image, right? Uh, unfortunately, you're right. Right. Uh, what's this is Kepler, our what very Kepler talented see? artist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what Kepler saw in this case, uh, it doesn't see it anymore. Unfortunately, it broke last May. Uh, but what we saw over a period of four years is dips in the uh, brightness of the star, Kepler-62, uh, which come periodically, and we realize very soon that they are not uh, just one or two uh, periods there, but five. And each one of them comes at different depth, which corresponds to the size of the planet, because how much of the light of the star you uh, obscure depends on your size. And uh, this is essentially the technique. You don't see the star and the planet uh, shadow right. projected on it. What you see, you're measuring the brightness, and the brightness dips just slightly, ever so slightly, in fact, when the planet is very small, periodically. And that's why you need a telescope like Kepler, which is in space, which can monitor those stars without any interruption over a period of four years and uh, which is uh, giving you an opportunity to see them come back again. Because if you see just once, you cannot determine the period. You don't know how far away this planet is from the star. And actually, you don't even know whether it's a planet in the right. first place. Right. How do you distinguish between that and just the pulsations of a star? That's right. So that was, that's the big question. Pulsation of stars, you probably looked at the sun. Many of you probably have. They know that uh, we have sunspots. Stars have spots. They look like this little spot there on the figure, uh, which is uh, the planet. How do you distinguish between the two? Well, that's why you need a very precise telescope like Kepler, which observes without any interruptions. So it has to come periodically back, and it has to retain its shape without any other changes in the brightness. You, so you technically, want, that's how you know right. how it, it's you, you don't want people to look directly at the sun, do you? Don't look directly right. at okay, the sun. Right. No. Okay, great. That's, that's very exciting. And again, just remind us, how, you say there are billions of exoplanets in our galaxy. Correct. So our galaxy, the Milky Way, that you all have seen uh, if you ever left New York City. <laughs> <laughs> Please do, if you haven't, sometimes. Uh, the Milky Way galaxy has about 200 to 300 billion stars. Um, we astronomers have spent 100 years on your behalf counting them, so now we know. <laughs> uh, now we know, thanks to Kepler and some of the ground-based uh, uh, work that has been done on discovering these exoplanets, uh, that uh, the majority of these stars do have planets, and many of them have planetary systems, and a certain fraction of them uh, have planets similar to the Earth, in the habitable zone, which we already talked about. Rocky, so dense that, planets. That's, yes, yeah. small size, rocky, dense planets in the habitable zone. That comes out to about anywhere between one to five billion such planets in our Milky Way galaxy. 